Let's talk a little bit about the great educational technology debate. First off, I just want to ask you a quick question. Which class would have the better lecture information recall? First, a class that watches a lecture in a classroom with the teacher at the front of the classroom, or two, a class that watches their lecture on their laptop. And if you're watching this video, just pause for a second. Just think about which one you think would be more effective in uh, helping students to recall the lecture content. Let's talk a little bit about the debate before I answer that question. So Richard Clark and Robert Cosme engaged in a public debate on the effectiveness of education, of ed tech and multimedia learning that's famous in educational technology circles. But let's be very clear that the debate about educational technology in general is not a new debate. The debate goes back to at least to Socrates, who thought that allowing students to use books, which in his day was the newfangled technology, he thought that was a bad idea because books would diminish their memory. And you know what? He was probably right about that. But he didn't realize how large the positive impact the books would have in educating a broader audience and transmitting information more reliably over time. But back in 1984, that version of the educational technology debate, Clark argued that media or technology are mere vehicles to deliver instruction. In the same way that a type of truck delivering our groceries doesn't change the nutritional value of the groceries, if you think of it in terms of the technology available when he was first talking about this in the mid-1980s, you can see why the argument made sense back then. Whether you watch a lecture in person or on a VHS tape, the same information is being communicated in roughly the same format, that being a lecture format. Cosma countered that while Clark's argument is often correct, if media or technology are going to influence learning, media must be designed to give us powerful new methods, and our methods must take appropriate advantage of a medium's capabilities. So to summarize, it's not the media or technology that influences learning, it's how the technology is used that impacts the learning. So compare the old telephone with a modern smartphone. A smartphone doesn't significantly improve on voice calls, but it can also browse the web, allow you to listen to music, read books, uh, participate in video conferences, navigate on land, sea, or air, or collaboratively edit a document. The new smartphone technology definitely gives us powerful new methods, as Cosma put it. When Clark defended his argument that the delivery of media for instruction usually doesn't make a difference, the technological landscape was much different. VHS videotapes were the primary, primary means for watching uh, on-demand educational technology videos. Microsoft DOS was the dominant desktop operating system of the time. Dial-up modems using phone lines were state-of-the-art, and Microsoft Word looked like this. I suspect that in Clark's era, Clark's assessment that technology doesn't improve instruction was true almost all the time. On the other hand, with 20-plus years of maturation and significant improvements in bandwidth, hardware, and speed, and authoring tool usability improvements, I would argue that technology is now in a position to make a large positive impact on the delivery of instruction by enabling new pedagogical approaches to instruction, things like blended learning, uh, problem-based learning with virtual simulations, and collaboration. We have increasing realistic simulation hardware and software, like medical simulators, Oculus Rift virtual reality goggles, weird-looking telepresence robots, and maker bots that help bring our virtual creations into the physical world. While the passage of time has been kind to the pro-technology arguments of Cosma, it's important to remember that Clark was correct in arguing that no matter what new educational technology we use, if we don't also change the pedagogy or the teaching method, the educational outcomes will stay the same. Of course, there are other reasons to implement ed tech other than to improve student performance, things like broadening access to education, streamlining administration and cost savings, 
as well as preparing for pandemics and home-based learning because of external influences. Next, we'll talk a little bit about course activities and assignments.